All right, welcome to the uh, first ever uh, History and Scotch. Um, so, I love Westerns, and um, I just got done watching one. And it sort of inspired me to do a video about, like, the misconceptions of the Old West. Because there's, you know, like, pretty much every Western, you have these sort of cliches. And um, as that period of history gets further and further from us, those become more and more sort of the truth or sort of what we picture when we picture the Old West. And um, so I figured I'd go through and, um, you know, fucking ruin that for everybody. So the first, the first and the, the, you know, the biggest one really is like what made the West wild. Um, and of course the idea is, you know, sort of people had more freedom and there wasn't much law enforcement and everybody had guns and was drunk and, and yeah, that's, you know, that's partially true. Um, there was actually a little bit more in the way of gun control than what we have now, but, um, Essentially, what caused the Wild West was the entire fucking country was suffering from PTSD. Um, you know, we had just got done having a civil war. And um, that affected everybody in the country. I mean, that was fought in people's backyards. Um, it, it would have been real difficult for somebody living in the United States at that time to not be affected by that negatively in some way. And especially, like, folks from the South, a lot of them, you know, obviously they didn't just lose the war, but they also lost their land, their homes, and a lot of times their wives and children. Um, so they had very little to lose and they were angry and, um, they headed out West looking for gold or to round up cattle. And, um, just everybody had a short fuse, um, essentially. So, I mean, really, if, if you want to look at like a root cause it was probably post-traumatic stress disorder. Now, the next one is every Western you watch, um, folks are always filthy, wearing ratty clothing, covered in dust and all that. And it honestly couldn't be further from the truth. In the 19th century, like appearance and um, especially like clothing was a huge fucking deal. Um, it's not like today where you can just go down to the corner store in your pajama pants. If you did that shit back in the 19th century, you'd be like a pariah. Um, and even these guys, like, if you were dirt, dirt fucking poor back then, you still had at least one nice set of clothes because that meant everything. Um, and these cowboys and stuff like that, that get off the trail and they'd be all filthy and ratty clothing. The first fucking thing they did was get a bath, get a shave and put on some nice clothing before they went into town. So that everybody covered in dust and like little shitty, that just wasn't the case. Um, in fact, even a lot of these um, sort of uh, mining towns and like Deadwood and um, Dodge City, they were actually fairly metropolitan places. I mean, um, I think De Deadwood had like an oyster bar and uh, Dodge City had like a library and shit like that. I mean, there was actually a lot of money going through these places because of, you know, gold or cattle or, you know, what have you, that um, they were fairly, um, fairly high society, even by like, you know, back East standards and things like that. So um, the, people didn't walk into a town like that without looking their absolute best. All right. So the next one is uh, everybody running around with, with two guns on their hip and that that's sadly untrue um now it is true that in the percussion pistol days if somebody was expecting trouble they would generally go and then we're talking about like riding into battle here you know you're gonna or you're gonna get on a posse and go track down some outlaw these guys would pack three four even five pistols because again they're difficult to reload um but that wasn't an everyday thing and in fact that was looked down upon if you saw a guy walking around with more than one pistol it probably meant he was expecting trouble, which meant he was probably an asshole, which meant folks would generally avoid him as such. So um, there was even words for it, like I think two gun man and, you know, basically like um, sort of derogatory terms for people with all kinds of guns on them. And, you know, so that even the even the term cowboy actually wasn't the term that 
cowboys would use to refer to themselves. Cowboy was actually a derogatory term, um, sort of like we use the word thug today when you describe like a bad element or something like that. Um, cowboys would refer to themselves as like um, cattle drivers or ranch hands or, you know, et cetera, et cetera. In fact, if you called a cowboy a cowboy, he would probably um, want to have some words with you. So that's another one. Ah, I'm trying to think of what else. I thought I had one more. Oh, what tamed the West? Yeah, so this is the last one. And this is pretty funny. Um, now, when you think of what tamed the West, you automatically think of uh, a man with his six shooter and his Winchester repeater. And it's actually uh, something far worse than a gun. Um, women. <laughs> uh, believe it or not, um, both women and barbed wire, the reason why the West was finally won. Um, after these rail towns and mining towns and cattle towns started to get established, droves and droves of women started coming out West because just like the men, they wanted opportunity. They wanted something different. And these towns had been majority men for quite a while. And as soon as the women started showing up, everybody collectively sort of decided they were going to act right. And I am not making this up. You can see this trajectory in history. And at a point in about the 1880s, suddenly instead of building casinos, brothels, and bars, they started building schools, libraries, and churches. <laughs> so um, the other thing, of course, is barbed wire. Um, as the, um, the Homestead Act really took off, um, in the, in the very beginning, it was very difficult to put up fences around your property because there was very little tim timber out on the plains and even just getting some out there was expensive. So you had all these vast open tracts of land where these massive cattle herds could graze. And they would, they, I mean, this led to big problems. Homesteaders getting into wars with cattle barons and there's a whole bunch of madness with that. But barbed wire, when that was invented, that was cheap, um, readily available and Basically, it just went to work dividing up the West. Everybody put barbed wire on their land, um, cattle, and it slowly sort of choked off the um, the open range. And that sort of put a damper on those range wars and huge cattle herds and, you know, all that nonsense. So, I mean, it's a, it's a little, it's a little, uh, it's not as exciting as, um, you know, a cult peacemaker, but, you know, what are you going to do? So that's um, some big um, misconceptions about the West and they're present in pretty much every, you know, I especially love the uh, spaghetti Westerns and those are probably the worst as far as um, historical inaccuracy, but they're still fun. And um, the Wild West is still an incredible um, period in American history, despite not quite being what we want it to be. So uh, thanks for watching.